Hey everyone, welcome to the Fargo 3D Printing Podcast. Today, Jake Clark, John Schneider, and Eric Faldi. Um, today on the podcast, we are going to talk about why isn't my printer printing? Or a better question that we usually get is, uh, it only prints for half an hour and then it stops. Or it only gets up uh, one inch in the print and then it stops printing. Right, so this isn't going to be, this isn't, isn't going to solve any problem where your printer stops midway through printing. But nine times out of ten, when your printer starts out printing successfully and isn't able to finish the print, it almost always has to do with clogging partway up the thermal barrier tube. And I'd say of those, nine times out of ten, it's due to heat creep. So, Jake, you've talked about heat creep in the past. I think yes. we have an entire podcast where we talk specifically about heat season creep. Season one. That was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very early that in season one. That was in the teens, one. I believe. It was a very early episode. Yeah, because I think you had, a, you had a graph on everything. I know. I had, that was, I, Actually, I think I still have yeah. my whiteboard that has that diagram on it. I think but, we, we but, shot it over there and had a lot more people. Oh, it was, yeah. Well, Todd, Todd, was, there Todd was there. A lot of people there. I, think I, think was I think it was us four. You are sleeping uh, behind the including podcast. Todd. Yeah. So the, the basics behind heat creep, um, heat from your heater block starts traveling up the thermal barrier tube. So that's the, uh, the metal tube that guides the filament down through the heater block and the nozzle. Heat creeps up through that and causes the filament inside of it to soften. Now some printers have a PTFE, think of it like a Teflon tube going down through there, which lessens the effects of heat creep, because even if the filament starts to soften, it can still slide through. But if you have a bare stainless steel tube, like a lot of 3D printers do, the filament is gonna start sticking to the inside of that stainless steel tube. And so it'll start printing out really well, but as the printer's been on for half an hour, 45 minutes, that heat creeps up, causes it to soften, and then you start getting clogs or partial clogs. Uh, usually the culprit behind this is inadequate cooling. A lot of times the fan that's blowing air on the heat sink that's supposed to be sucking that heat away isn't functioning properly. It might be backwards, it might just be underpowered, so you might see it rotating slowly, but it's not going at full power. It's not moving enough air. And repl replicator twos have been known for the fan to just start slowing down over time. Um, I've ran into that where it's, it's, it's a bushing, isn't it? Yeah, like it's just it's, it's, either that or a sleeve bearing. It's, yeah, it's the, the fan is kind of a, a cheap one that, can, that it comes stock with. You can kind of tap with. it with like an Allen wrench sometimes, just right and in the middle. And it'll go. I mean, that's what I do with my, uh, I think it's my, uh, uh, power supply on my computer it just makes a lot of noise just tap it with a pen or something and I mean they seem to last what 500 anywhere from 500, 500 to, to 1000 hours, hours yeah. depending on um, the uh, the so that's that's one of them and then uh, the other one is yeah it's, it's backwards so if there's on the rep twos if you're actually seeing that the green letters are facing you then uh, your fan is backwards uh, it needs to be switched around so that the green letters are are on the inside and the black is facing you and uh, that will mean that the air is being pushed over the over the heat sink fans and actually taking that that heat away and dissipating it um it that's for the rep twos and rep two x's now you'll have to see with your other machine if it's a if it's a robo if it's a lulz bot because um, i know the lulz bots actually have well, and i can talk i can talk quite a bit about the lulz well, look at that well we can we, let's get okay. let's get Ooh. back to that in a second um see how i just pulled that out of nowhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> so magic <laughs> um so that's that's the two two reasons with the rep twos. The other reason is if your heat sink is actually um, either backwards, so the bottom piece of your heat sink isn't actually set up against that bar mount, or you actually have the spacers in the wrong spot. So the, sometimes people put this put the heat sink right up against the the fan and then put the little spacers between the bar mount and the back of the heat sink. That's wrong. Uh, make sure that that heat sink is fully up against the bar mount assembly and the screws are tied tight to it and you actually have the spacers in there. If you don't have the spacers, um, you can either go to McMaster Car and get some uh, um, tubing or you can 3D print them uh, with APLA yeah, or it's, nylon. It's pretty simple to 3D print. And the big thing you're looking for with the heat sink, you want maximum surface contact from the heat sink to that heater block, or not the heater block, but the bar mount assembly. Some people will even take uh, like CPU thermal paste and will put a little a little coating of that between the heat sink and that aluminum, just that there's more, uh, more well, optimal heat transfer. So I guess if we uh, if we go and look at the Lulzbot 3D printer, so earlier versions of the Lulzbot had a problem with uh, had a problem with heat creep. Well, not all earlier versions, specifically the uh, the Taz 5 or the uh, the all metal uh, extruder upgrade for the for the Taz 4. It has a uh, has an I think it's an E3D hot end or hexagon hot end, and so it has a little hexagon shaped heat sink. And before it had just a tiny little squirrel fan. I think just the a little. Lulzbot Mini still has them. Yeah, the Lulzbot Mini still has it, but I've never noticed a problem with the Lulzbot Mini. It was specifically the Taz 
uh, the TAS 5 and the, uh, the upgrade for the TAS 4. So that little squirrel fan just, I mean, we're talking tiny, like the fan blade radius, or the Squirrels diameter. Really running around the diameter, I don't know if we have another There's one. one so it's, it's yeah, small, so it's about smaller the size, than this. About the size of a dime is the, the fan radius, or di excuse me, diameter. So not enough airflow. So what would happen, because it's an all, it's an all metal extruder, all metal hot end, the filament, the PLA, would start to stick to the inside of that thermal barrier tube. And so you'd get prints that would be under extruding or jam up. Uh, it took a long time for me to figure out what the problem was. I went back and forth with Lulzbot a little bit. One thing that can help with that, uh, aside from putting a more uh, a higher powered fan or a larger fan on it so there's increased airflow, is, uh, is oiling the filament. So what I mean with that is you take the tip of your filament, drip it or drop it in a little bit of uh, vegetable oil, okay. and then you run it down through the extruder. So that acts as a, as a lubricant on the inside of the thermal barrier tube. So yeah, the PLA will still soften, but it won't stick to the inside. So the drive gear will still be able to push the filament through. Now on the TAS-6, they did a very nice upgrade. They have an actual 40 millimeter, a proper 40 millimeter fan, and it's ducted so all of that airflow is directed onto that same heat sink. So I think it's completely eliminated that heat creep issue. Now this is almost entirely a PLA problem. ABS doesn't have an issue with it because ABS doesn't, it's not as sticky of a material. PLA tends to be a stickier plastic when it gets, uh, when it gets soft. Yeah, and then when when you actually have jams afterwards, it's because the uh, once, you know, let's say you're like, oh, I'm done with this. I don't want to deal with it tonight. So you shut everything down and you come back the next day or, or a couple hours or, or maybe the end of the week and you start it up again and you try and get going. It's like, well, why can't I push filament now? Um, it's because it's hardened and the heat isn't up there uh, melting that plastic. So now um, you actually have to disassemble. Um, you can then heat it up and let it heat soak where you can actually leave it at more of your maximum uh, temperature range so for like the rep twos that's about 260 oh. um, and one thing that works really well for that you don't need to completely disassemble it you can just disconnect that 40 millimeter fan on the front of the printer and let it heat soak and then you can either push the, it's tough to push filament down through um, but if you have like a, a little well, metal rod that's have, the right diameter you can because I've done this before where you, it, yeah. you can just push it through without having to disassemble but if there's everything a, but if you've taken half of it out and there's a blob on it or if it's pushed and there's a blob, you can't ever melt that, so you can't get it back through the drive block. You can right? always hit it with the torch. I, I've done it before. I don't well, recommend it. What you it. should do is you, if you take it off the gantry and you set it up top, you take the 40 millimeter fan off, you take the, uh, oh, the that, two things, that, see, and I'm you not, take the heat sink off, then you can take the motor off, and then you can actually heat it right there, and then you can pull it out, because usually there's a little bit of a, of a bulb at the top. Yeah, I guess what I'm talking about is, is where it's clipped all the way down to the top of the thermal barrier tube, and then you no. are able to push from above. You saw, yeah, you can do that too is where you can take it, you can take the front fan and the heat sink off, yeah. and then you can lift the motor just a little bit, clip it with the side cutters, um, then you oh, can take them. that's what I do on the rep too. Then you can do that. Yeah. Then you can push it down. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, because it will form There that. will be a little bit of a ball at, top, at the top. Yeah. And it won't be able to go through everything, so. Right. Um, I think we have a couple different videos. We have one where it's actually uh, disassembling the whole entire Rep2 extruder head um, down to the heater block. So you can follow that up to a certain point and then uh, skip a portion and then go back to where we're, we're reassembling it. Um, we did the um, smart extruder as well. Yep. Which? Yeah, the smart extruder is a little bit of a pain to disassemble. That, that was because the, of the smart because extruder, of the not the smart extruder plus. Yeah, the so. smart extruder plus it's shouldn't different. have that same issue because that actually does have a PTFE guide tube all the way from the drive gear down to the thermal barrier tube. So there shouldn't be shouldn't be an area where it. I can mean, get stuck. and that's the that's the kind of the the biggest engineering hurdle a lot of the FDM printers have is controlling that hot and cold zones mm -hmm. you know how that transition is um so that it's a it's an immediate change it's not a gradual change because that's where you can get a lot of that jamming um i mean i've seen a little bit of everything from multiple fans to liquid cooled to ceramics i mean there's liquid cooled would be we've talked about that before liquid know. cooled on a replicator too would be really fun to do it's not terribly practical well it's not practical at all <laughs> Well, I, I don't know. It could it's be expensive. It, it mostly looks cool. Yeah, I mean, and it adds it adds mass to your uh, to your extruder. So and, and now you can't you can't print this quickly. Bigger. You might run into artifacting. But man, it, it'd be cool to say, hey, I've got a liquid. I think cooled. there's some people out there in Reddit and or Thingiverse that have done it. I mean, some people have done it, but I don't think, to my knowledge, there's no one producing an actual product that you can buy and have like a kit. But yeah, someone's made someone's gone out there made uh, a modified. I think has a water cool version as well. For their, maybe for their volcano, 
I know that they had they, they one. Might. I don't know if they've they've. I don't know if it's an earlier version or a later version. Um, I, I know there was at one point a water cooled one for one of theirs. Um, but I mean, then 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 you then you start worrying about oh, when you have to unhook everything, and then you, if you get water on any of the electrical components or on the board that's underneath, I mean, there's a lot of a lot more risk yeah. going with water cooled. I guess um, another reason I can think of that I've seen that uh, at least in the replicator uh, family. The reason that your printer won't print is that the stepper motor is either uh, it's too hot. Sometimes that ends up heating up things as well, uh, or it's maybe not plugged in correctly. Um, we've had that where it's doing it's stepping back and forth, so it's just duh, 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 duh. you'll hear that clicking noise, and then it's just not. It's just gonna eat at it, and then it's gonna clog up, and yeah, it's a that, mess. That when I first started with the Rep Twos, that's what the clicking noise was. A terrible fingernail on a chalkboard. It's like board it's for like me. a hard drive, the click of death. If you hear it's it, it's just, too late. It's yeah. just like, oh, I know what the issue is, and, and it's like, you know, 75% of the way through yeah. um, through the print, there's nothing you can do, um, really. Yeah, another um, thing that I've done is sometimes I don't turn the machine off when I'm cleaning it, because I'm just in a hurry. It's like, if I turn it off, it'll cool off, and then I'll have to heat it back up. I'm in a hurry. I just leave it on. It's not. I don't recommend this. Don't do it at home. Uh, unless you have gloves or something on, um, <laughs> but you know, I'll snip the filament, get try to clean it out, and then um, sometimes Allen wrench hits the fan blade. And yep. Oh, I've done that. I, before. I, one time, I saw a printer that I was working on, like, what, what's wrong with it? And then there was maybe half a fan blade left. <laughs> yeah, like just one or two fins <laughs> left on the fan. Yeah. yeah so, so that's another thing too. If you take a look at your fan when it's powered off, if you're missing fan blades, that's another reason you don't have enough airflow. Yeah. Even if you're just missing one or two, it fins, might be that spinning be right, but if you see too much of uh, whatever's behind, like. Like this heat sink if it looks too uh too clear then maybe your fan blades are all broken like what i've done before yeah <laughs> so, so, the, don't do that. so the front on the replicator to the front fan is uh what actually cools everything and then the side fan actually cools the filament so the left side fan is the or the blower fan is the active cooling fan and then the front fan is just the heat sink fan or the front mm -hmm. fan is what we call it so um we should really do terminology of the of the hot end at some point because a lot and it, it also depends on companies as well because yeah. different companies will call it different things. I know Lulzbot actually had a really nice diagram. We have it hanging up over in the corner for the Lulzbot Mini, which walked through and explained a couple different pieces of, well, of the hardware. And then some some three D printer companies will add a marketing term for for that part of the printer and then they'll put the little tm after it so that it's oh it's now their term like yep. uh with the for example the 3d systems cube pro it's not a print nozzle it's a print jet it's not an extruder mm. it's it's that whole print Whatever. jet assembly <laughs> it's like okay i mean all right you've got you've got that little extra bit of ip that no one it's, it's like who's no gonna try cares. who's it's gonna pretty try much, pretty much fused deposition modeling and then whatever fff stands for it's like same deal. Oh, fused filament, filament fabrication that one yeah no, and then, I don't like to use that one personally, but then they they actually have a different term for um, for FDM printing. That's not FDM or FFF. Oh, it's um, I think it's PJM, plastic jet modeling. Mm, I've seen it a couple of different yeah. places. But anyway, I don't know. Any other thoughts on why a print could stop mid print? I mean, I, we're Obviously keeping this mainly more, to yeah. I mean, this is mainly this some, is the main reason. Sometimes it'll be up. something something some foreign object enters the build plate area, or sometimes oh. like the the. Maybe the fan duct falls off. It could be a lot of things, but we covered, you know. Right. Well, I guess basics. another another really obvious one, or should be obvious, if you have poor quality filament, so the diameter is fluctuating. If it's if the diameter is uh, diameter is too large, yep. it's gonna not be able to feed through the extruder. It's just gonna jam up. There's sure. nothing you can really do about that except buy better quality filament. Yeah. If it's too thin <laughs> so. or too fat, it's gonna have a problem. If it's too thin, you'll just see the filament yeah. shoot back up, and it'll just all melt. So in uh, there. insert obligatory 3D fuel filament plug. <laughs> But we actually have filament for sale on the, on the website. Yeah, we after, do. After a really long we do. time, we're actually of not having filament. Actually, stocking filament. So go yes, buy that, some good that good plug was stuff. that plug was facetious, but also buy filament <laughs> yeah. from us. The, the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Don't go buy the ten dollar cheap stuff. All right. Well, unless you guys have any other thoughts on that, I can't I think, think of anything else. But I okay. think that takes care of it for this episode of the Fargo 3D Printing Podcast. Uh, if you have any questions want us to dive deeper into any certain topic, just let us know in the comments below. If you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, you can always send us questions or comments to support at Fargo3dprinting.com. So on behalf of myself, John Schneider, Eric Faldi, and Jay Clark, thank you for watching slash listening. Bye. Uh, the first one is, why isn't my printer printing?
All right. Uh, that's actually a really that's a yeah. really good podcast title. Why isn't my 3D printer printing? 